Would you go to a restaurant if they were trying to lose money on purpose? Probably not. Would you support your hometown sports teams if they were trying to lose on purpose? If you're a diehard, maybe. But if you're not, and you're just a casual sports fan, probably not, you're not gonna support them. With that being said, after juggling between a couple different topics, I'm gonna talk about why tanking in sports is bad for sports and bad in general. Before I begin, a lot of you probably don't know what tanking in sports means, and I'm here to tell you that. Tanking in sports is basically owners and general managers losing on purpose to try to save money, money, <laughs> and building for the future while saving money, but being horrible in the present. And it's not that the players aren't trying to win. The players on the court or the field, they're trying to win. They're, they're paid to try to win. But it's the guys upstairs that are making the financial decisions and the roster moves that are not trying to win when they easily could put better players and better products on the field for the fans that pay the, the money to, to fill the stadiums and the arenas. Now, analytics. Now, some of you may know what analytics is, some of you may not. What analytics is, is a, how do I explain it? It's an advanced stat that can kind of tell you how good of a player is or how bad a player is. Some analytics are good, some analytics are bad. And some analytics mean absolutely nothing. And a lot of it has to do with the calculator. And a lot of old school guys, they really don't like it. They're like, get these nerds out, get put the calculator down and watch the games. I'm in I'm in like I'm in like uh I'm in like the middle here. Some analytics are good. I see how they affect the game in a positive way. And some analytics, I'm like, all right, no, nah, that's just useless. <laughs> but I see where they're coming from from both worlds. But now that we're in the analytics era of sports, that's what drove a lot of owners to try to save money. I don't know why there's a pink thing there. But that's what drove a lot of owners to save money. And it has made general managers and owners want to save money and not give the guy the big contract that's going to put them over the top when they could save the money when they easily could spend it. And this wasn't an issue in the, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, or even the early 2000s. It's kind of come to flourishing now in the 2010s, now in the 2020s. Now the technology has expanded and that the calculator, as they like to call it, has taken over a lot of the game. But now I'm going to talk about how in the NBA, there was an example of how tanking got so bad, the league had to step in and literally tell the team, all right, this has to stop. And I'm gonna be talking about the process. The process took place in Philadelphia, one of the bigger markets and more passionate sports towns across the United States. I've been to Philly, those people are nuts. I've been to Giant Stadium where the New York football giants play, when the Philadelphia Eagles come to town. Those, those guys, they're even more nuts. So these guys are passionate about their sports. And I was so happy when they beat them in the World Series in 2009, the Yankees and the Phillies. But basically in 2013, Sam Hinkie was hired to be the general manager. And he's like, I'm gonna, he sold it to the fans too. He was like, we're gonna do something called the process. And what the process was, was a full blown rebuild where he just traded everybody with value anybody if you contributed to winning nope sorry sir you're out of town and it just created one of the most unreal rebuilds in nba history for about four years 76ers according to basketballreference.com had the worst attendance and worst record in all of the nba they were finishing last in attendance 28th 27th and that's all on basketballreference.com and one year in 2015, 2016 season, they finished with 10 wins out of 82. So 10 and 72, that's the worst record or one of the worst records in NBA history. While the Golden State Warriors that year finished 73 and nine to cap off the greatest regular season ever. So what a difference from Golden State to Philly, just complete difference. But obviously, but in the process, they kept drafting all these injured players. So in 2013, they traded up to get a center who was injured, who didn't play his first year. 
he came back the second year. He played there for about two and a half years. He was all right. They shipped him off to Dallas because he wasn't that good. They realized he wasn't going to be that good. 2014, they drafted Joel Embiid, who now has turned into one of the best centers in the league. Not as good as my boy Cat, though. We'll leave that for another day. But he's turned out to be one of the best centers in the league. And he missed his first two years due to injury. And before he even played, people thought, oh my God, this might be the biggest bust in history. They draft this guy, and now he's not even going to play a game. But he's overcome the injuries, and he's been he's been pretty good. 2016, they drafted Ben Simmons, number one overall, who was, you guessed it, injured. <laughs> he didn't even play his first year due to a, a foot injury, but now he's back and he's playing. He's, he's pretty good out there in the league now. And then 2000... Ooh, I missed 2015. Mine was, I'm sorry. 2015, they drafted Jaleel Okafor, who his first year showed big promise. But he kind of faded out. They shipped him out to Brooklyn. Now he's on the New Orleans Pelicans. And he's just, he's carved out a nice role, but he's not the player he was supposed to be. 2016, Ben Simmons, as I just said. 2017, they drafted Markel Fultz, number one overall. Traded up with the Boston Celtics to get the number one overall pick. And they just, he just did not work out. He couldn't, he lost his shooting form. He had a shoulder injury. And he was just brutal, just awful and they eventually shipped him to the Orlando Magic halfway through last year and this year he's carved out a pretty nice role with them and he's kind of revived his career down there in Orlando where the expectations are not nearly as high as they are in Philly due to Orlando being a smaller market but 2018 that was last year they didn't have a high draft pick and now after the league stepped in and after years of just losing and awful records bottom bottom feeder attendance numbers like between 26th and 30th out of 30 in the league league stepped in hinky was eventually fired this whole rebuild and all the tanking eventually cost him his job and, and forced the league to step in and now the sixers kind of have it going they've made the playoffs the last couple years now today with um Embiid and simmons they're they're all right. I mean, a lot of guys say they can't play together, and they got them in this whole process rebuild that cost the fans four or five years of just straight losing and just awful basketball. Who knows if they'll even play together if they don't win the championship this year because they're in the playoffs this year. So it's, like I said, this whole tanking thing, it's worked out for the Sixers so far, kind of. They got their GM fired, but now it could go all downhill if they have to trade one of these guys. So we'll see what happens with that. And before I move on, right behind me, I got my Kobe jersey, the late, great Kobe Bryant, one of the greatest players of all time. No matter how bad his teams were, <clears throat> excuse me, he always went out there, competed hard, and never wanted to lose, no matter how bad his teams were, especially in his later years. Now, you're probably wondering about other sports, such as the NFL and MLB. I'm going to touch on those real quickly. NFL, tanking, you can kind of get away with it because a quarterback or an addition of a new coach, it can really make a difference within one year. For example, back in 2011, Peyton Manning, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, was a quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts. He suffered a neck injury, and he ended up missing the entire season. And with that being said, the Colts end up going 2-14. and 14. They got the number one pick in the draft. The next year, they drafted Andrew Luck as their new quarterback. And they hired a new coach. And playoffs within one year of going 2-14. and 14. So tanking, you can kind of get away with it because unless you're the Cleveland Browns, you're not really getting the number one pick overall every single year. And baseball, and that was according to Pro Football Reference, 2-14 and 14 Colts going up to 11-5. and five. The next year with the addition of Andrew Luck. That was a that's according to profootballreference.com. Now with baseball, it's a little different too, because guys go through the minor leagues. So you can sell a rebuild if you got a top prospect down in the minor leagues. I know with the Chicago Cubs, it's a little different because they're a baseball town, but they were not good. I went to Wrigley two times when they were bad and they were they were brutal, but the fans showed out. So they could kind of get away with it because they could sell to the fans that will be good in a couple years. And a couple years ago, they won a World Series, and it eventually worked out for them. Now, with the now another one that you can do as far as a rebuild is, 
New York Yankees. We call it a reboot because the Yankees never missed the playoffs and never finished with a below 500 record. They, we called it a reboot back there in New York because they would remain competitive and some of the moves they made, such as trading their top closer for their top shortstop now and their top relief pitcher or one of their top relief pitchers for another just fantastic outfielder. And the general manager of the Yankees, Brian Cashman, did a fantastic job of selling the reboot or rebuild to the fans. And that was according to site blog fangraphs.com how he sold the reboot to the fans, and it's worked out fantastic. The Yankees are now in a position to win the World Series this year, which I couldn't be more happy about. Uh, moving on, as a whole, I mean, tanking in sports, it could work for you. Like I said, it's worked for the 76ers partially, even though if these two guys, Embiid and Simmons, never, never recovered from their injuries, it could have been a total disaster. Because foot injuries to big men, Simmons is six foot ten and beat is seven two. Foot injuries to big men, never good. And as a whole, tanking can be good in football. Like I said, Indianapolis Colts quarterback playoffs the next year. That was a bad snap. I'm sorry, but uh, like I said, it's always a crapshoot. So my advice to the GMs and the owners: just go for it. Just go for it because you could always benefit from having a good product on the field and a difference is between tanking and just being bad there is a difference like tanking is when you're trying to lose on purpose but being bad but trying to be good or trying to put a competitive team on the floor but being bad is totally different the team's just bad and then rebuilding as far as like having a young core on the field that's growing and maturing with each other can also be good for the fans because it's showing like, wow, we have a good young core with us now that will easily grow and mature as they get older and get better in the league. So as a whole, tanking is bad for sports. It almost cost the 76ers, gosh, I have no idea. It almost cost them a lot of money and it almost cost a lot of people their jobs. It cost one guy its job, but it's almost cost a lot more people their jobs due to the fact that they could not get anything right and they just were not winning if these two guys didn't hit. But now I think they've kind of recovered from that. And as a whole, just go for it, seriously. Just with these sports teams, you just gotta go for it. But having a happy fan base can really go a long way. I know here's in the two years I've been here in Arizona, the Suns, they had a rough couple of years before this. But now that they got the right coach, now the fans are starting to show up more because I went through a couple of games. And now, now they're getting good. They're getting better. Not the greatest, but they're getting better. But hope you guys enjoyed this final presentation. And I'll catch you all.